Hey Anon, I hope the internet is treating you well today. My name is Leon, and this is now the second episode of the Morrowind Let's Play. So today, what we're going to focus on is just finding a couple quests in Sedanin. I mean, there should be plenty of things to do here. There's, uh, I think, three quests that I can think of. This should take up a lot of our time. However, the first thing that we're going to do, because our weight is sort of, we're, we're starting to get... Um, to our uh, weight capacity here, we're going to offload some of this junk over at Aurel's trade house. We did just give Fargoth his ring back, so let's just head right over to the trade house to start, because I don't want to get bogged down with other stuff. Alright, we'll go right in here, talk to Aurel and barter. So, the basics of bartering are, uh, each shopkeeper has a disposition so as we'll see because we gave Fargoth's ring back Aurel has a disposition towards us of 97 out of 100 points so that is going to factor into our ability to like haggle with him the other factor is our mercantile skill so as evidenced here the mercantile skill is pretty low on our character right now it is 10 out of 100 so that's not too great we're not going to really push him too much. Another thing that I believe um, factors into everything is your fatigue. So if we really wanted to haggle with him, I would just wait for the fatigue bar to go back all the way up. Uh, we don't necessarily have to do that because I don't think we're going to be haggling for more than like a couple gold. Usually I just like round it up to a nice round number so that I don't have to... Um, you know, calculate <laughs> stuff or look at, like, uneven numbers. I don't know if that bothers anybody else. I'm sure it does. It seems relatively normal. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're also going to take a look at the max, uh, amount of uh, seller gold that Ariel has. So Ariel has 800 gold, which is pretty good for, like, a uh, starting shopkeeper. So in our inventory, we have a bunch of garbage. We have some stuff that is useful, like these uh, alchemy ingredients. Those are always useful. Torches are useful. The other lighting um, is useful, but uh, not in the early game. Um, we're going to keep the dagger. We're going to get rid of the flint and the mots. Because, I mean, I think for the value, I just, I don't know that any of the liquors are really worth it. So... Plus, you get, a, you get quite a bit of gold for it. So we'll sell all of the alcohol, and then we'll head over to this useless book. Um, the candlesticks, we'll keep the torches, get rid of the lantern, basket, all these bottles, the bowls. Yeah, we don't really need any of this stuff until we have, like, a stronghold later, or some kind of, like, house to, like, live in and decorate. But we're not going to have one of those for a a while <laughs> so we'll just get rid of all of this kind of like useless loot and that's that so basically we have a total of 290s worth of items here and since i have 118 gold i'm just going to put it up to two so that this evens out my gold amount and then we'll try it and it worked because his um, disposition was quite high also it did raise our disposition by one point as well so um, maybe it is the case I'm not sure if you know maybe you can put it in the comment section but I'm pretty sure that I've noticed that when you successfully haggle with a shopkeeper it will increase their disposition by a little bit so anyway, now we've got uh, 400 gold. And one thing, another thing that I want to do while we're in Ariel's trade house, and maybe this will be useful for you as well, is there's a scout up here. So oh, yes. Alone is a scout. So we're going to speak to Alone. She is going to be able to unlock a bunch of places on our map. So I think it's very important to try and get as much information out of the scouts as possible. So basically what I do is I'll just click all of these. I mean, it, again, if this is your first time playing, I really highly and uh, strongly suggest that you read through all this stuff because they really, I think that they really took their time in um, writing the conversation dialogue and stuff. 
So yeah, I think we're pretty much there. I don't think we're unlocking anything else now. And if you were able to take a look at the map before, there was basically only Satanine on it. And now we've uncovered a bunch of other locations, kind of like in her general like area of expertise. And then as we go through the game, we'll be talking to other scouts who can help us unlock other parts of the map. And yeah, so that's basically that. Um, <laughs> I think uh, the yes, only other important thing here want. is we are going to take a quest and uh, not complete it for uh, this guy. So Friskar is the one who wrote this note. So if we take a, or the one who uh, this note was addressed to, rather, from Gansiel, who I guess it is the named guard. I uh, can't, I'm very shocked that I never picked up on that before. But anyway, so this is Friskar. So obviously he's involved in like some weird stuff. So we're gonna talk to him. All right, he said, you look like you could use a friend out Londa. Perhaps I could be your friend. I'd like for you to help me recover some gold. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's right. See, I had a bad runner, so he was gambling and he lost some money. Um, and now he wants us to shake down Fargoth, just like the guards were doing. So honestly, there's two things you can do here. Uh, well, three, technically. <laughs> the first thing is completely ignore him. Walk away from this, whatever. The second thing is you could find Fargoth's hiding place and then just, like, not give this guy the gold. Um, so I think in order to find that hiding place, you do have to accept the quest. So what I usually do is I'll accept the quest, but I do not give him the gold. But we're going to be going up over to um, I can do for you? the hiding spot anyway. So I think just for like um, convenience sake, we'll just take that. Okay, and then the other quest that we can speak just freely, pick up real quick here is we can speak to this Imperial man, Vidunius uh, Nucius. We'll just talk to him. And he's like, take the Silt Strider. That way you don't have to deal with anyone. Please go tell the Silt Strider operator that I sent you. Okay, so we can do that. That's pretty easy. That's pretty quick, Speak right? Freely, Just hop around here, make our way. Um, oh my goodness. Some of this passive dialogue is just so out of bounds sometimes. But anyway, so we'll go up to the Silt Strider operator. We're not going to go anywhere yet. Trip just for you. Um, Same low price. And we will say, hey, Vidunia said that we sent... Or he sent us. And then Darvame says, well, you know, I don't think he's very happy here. Okay, so now we have that information. So let's go talk to him and see if possible. Maybe we can figure out why he's so unhappy. Let's go do that. Sometimes he's like just straight up sitting in that little... <laughs> far out. He's just like sitting in that river. So I'm surprised that he's this far away. And then we'll talk to him and then he'll say, No, I'm not happy. I need a hundred gold. And then, yeah, let's just do it. Give us the cursed ring. We'll sell it. And, uh, yeah, we don't. I don't want this ring, personally. I can't see why it would be important. But, you know, we do get to help him um, leave. Yeah, fortify athletics for the cost of health. I don't think so. Um, so we'll sell that. We don't necessarily have to sell it right away. So the last thing that we can do is... I'm just going to equip the dagger in the hopes that I don't run into anything. Because it would be really difficult for us to heal out here without things getting in the way. You can always, if you get into a fight that you can't really um, handle on your own, you can always run back and have the guards deal with it. As um, a commenter said before, uh, however, we are just looking for a couple things. We're looking for two things to happen right now. One, we are going straight towards the uh, trigger for another quest. And then after that, we are going to get um, another, um, well, there, it's not really a quest, but we'll do another fun thing. 
So again, I think it's uh, right over. Sometimes I do get a little lost, but yep, okay, perfect. So it's right over here, but there's also two rats. I hope I deal with them one by one because I don't really have any way of um, uh, dealing with this yet. I think I'm going to let my um, fatigue come up a little bit before I head over there, just because that was a little annoying, um, even if it's a couple. And so, yeah, maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Over there, there's a dead body, and that is going to be the third quest that we can do in Sedanine, at least in the um, very beginning of the game. So we'll just take out this other rat. They were just trying to get a snack, you know, I do feel a little bad. And so your journal has been updated. We'll take this tax record and the gold. And then I guess I'll uh, look at some of these mushrooms because we will need those later. I'll take the spore pods as well. I can hear a script, but I can't see it. <laughs> Any violet copper dust? No? Alright, so yeah, so now we have another quest that we can take care of when we go back. So I think what we're going to do in order to get all of this done kind of nice as uh, sort of quickly as possible is we are going to head to the census and excise office. Because uh, first we're going to talk to a guard. They're going to tell us to go to the census and excise office. And then we're going to go there and then we're going to start doing a little detective work here. Um, so let's just head straight up over to the first guard that we see and let's talk to him. All right. So there's been a murder, murder of Processus Vitellius. All right. Go to the census excise office. We'll go hang out yeah. with that old man who... Gave us the personality test earlier. And hopefully he can help us figure out where to go from here. Now, normally I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, we should be working with these people. But they do, they give you, uh, they give you more gold. And we do need gold to start off. Ah, so we'll hello. talk up. Did you want something? Yes, I did. So we have to report the murder, and then he'll say, oh, did you find any money? And yeah, we found money, so here's the money. All right, and then he'll give us 500 instead. So instead of only getting 200 gold, now we can get 500 gold from him. So let's figure out who murdered Processus Vitellius. And in order to do that, we are just going to go out and talk to somebody. Maybe Fargoth, what's he know? Someone finally got him, huh? Well, it's no surprise, I suppose. No one likes a tax collector, especially one who flaunts his wealth while taking our hard-earned cash. Only one who could stomach him at all was the Vere over in the lighthouse. Alright, so, sad for her, but... I'm listening. Okay, <laughs> let's head right over to the lighthouse then. So here's the lighthouse... You know, right over to the left of all this stuff. And then there's also another thing real quick outside the lighthouse. Because we still have some time. Yeah, it's 4 p.m. So I'm just trying to do like perfect time management for this. So that we get everything done. Um, so in this stump, there's an axe. Um, yeah. All right, cool. So basically, um, all you have to do is just jump up on those those giant boulders and then try and get yourself right over in here. So this is not the only stump in the Bitter Coast that has stuff in it. Um, actually, there are stumps like all over. It's not going to be like this close. But um, someone gives you the knowledge at one point. Um, like, if it's, like, little advice or something like that, where they say, like, oh, because it's, like, such a huge area for smugglers, that um, smugglers have ended up hiding a lot of stuff inside of the stumps. So, it's always good if you can reach the stump, 
you should absolutely try and look in the stump. All right, so now we are going to talk Is to Thavere Vedrano about the murder of Processus. All right, so she didn't know, which means this must have happened relatively recently, like as soon as you got here or something. So he was the gentlest man I've ever met. He and I had become so close in the past few months. I don't know what I'll do without him. I've only seen him get angry once or twice and never raised a hand to anyone. This is so sad. Yes, it is sad, but, you know, um, we're just going to have to talk her through it. So he was arguing once with Foran Gilneth about his taxes. Foran thought Processus had been levying too much and skimming off the top for himself. So... All right, I think a lot of this has to come down to the ring, right? Like, she gave him a ring. It was too, f it was too fancy, too fancy ring, and it made everybody else mad. So, um, this sucks. This is pretty sad. So yeah, we'll look for the ring. I'm also just gonna run through all of these really quickly. And great. So, um. Now we're, we're going to quickly switch gears and focus on the Fargoth's hiding place very quickly. Also, at the top of the lighthouse, if you just hit the um, left control button and sneak, there's a lot of great stuff up here to sell. So right here, the Wraith's Wedding Dowry. This is a great book. Um, it's worth a lot and it increases your unarmored skill by one point. So that's good. We got some paper, a bit of bread, grief. At this point, we're really just going to focus on taking basically everything until we go and get our alchemy equipment from Caldera. Otherwise, it's just a little too hard to get like all of that like startup gold that just makes the game easier. So, uh, depending on what time it is, yeah, so it's 5 p.m., so we're just going to pass the time up here. We're just going to wait until I think like 11-ish. And then we're going to crouch. We don't have to. Actually, maybe we should have waited until midnight. Um, no, maybe not. So I'm going to crouch. So see, it, it's a little difficult to tell, but... Fargoth is sneaking around now. He's got his torch, so he's still quite visible. <laughs> like, I don't think that he should be sneaking around with the torch. But anyway, um, he's sneaking around. We're crouched so, uh, so as to not alert him to our presence. And basically, all you have to do is sit here, crouched, make sure he doesn't see you, because then he'll, like, stop and wait for him to go to his hiding place. It looks like he is making his way over there right now. And then, like I said before, we're just going to um, take the gold from him. This is technically not shaking him down, so I don't feel as bad about it. And he can keep his family heirloom ring. Like, uh, we, don't, <laughs> we don't need to sell that. I think it's only worth like 50 or something anyway. So there he is. He's in his hiding spot. And there should be a journal update, but, um, it appears as though, did we get that? No, we didn't. I thought that it was supposed to update your journal, but, um, maybe not. And, uh, that's okay. So he's gone. Let's go back down here. And then I believe we should be able to just grab that gold. And then we're going to ask around about uh, Farron Gilneth. Or we're just going to go find him. Um, yeah. So that's strange. I, I feel like I remember there being like a journal update for this. But here we are. Oh, and there's a nice lockpick in there too. I mean, the guard's looking right at us, but I don't think that this counts as like... Yeah, stealing or anything. So, let's ask this person if it's possible. Hmm. Nope, There's that's the same watching. thing that um, uh, Fargoth said. Okay, so now, to finish off the third quest that we can do, and Satanine to start. 
I am going to save the game because sometimes this doesn't go the way that I want it to. Um, so just to be absolutely sure, I'm going to save the game and then go in here and try and talk my way out of this one because his hand-to-hand -hand combat is really good. What do you think I mean, it is that? nice to get access to all this stuff in here, and I mean, we might as well just read this book off the start. So this is a Dance in Fire Chapter 6, and it increases your mercantile skill by one. We're not going to take it. We're just going to close it because he's right there. Um, so, yeah. So we saved the game, and now I'm, honestly, I'm just waiting for my fatigue to go up because I'm a little scared of um, making him angry. Because I'm trying to uh, do this with the least amount of trouble. So, let's talk to him. We'll talk to him about the murder. And he says, that fetcher, you're damn right I did him in. And a good thing, too. He was skimming a load of money from all us honest people, overcharging us on our taxes, and keeping the difference for himself. He was always flaunting his money around, showing off his new clothes and jewels. So I killed the bastard and left his body out there to rot, with all his ill-begotten gold still on him. Yeah, but not that ring. Okay, um... Hmm. So. Uh, I'm trying to balance right now. I don't want to act as an arm of the state. Um... I don't think that it was right that he murdered him. But I do want the gold from... Um... I want that 500 gold. Because if I had that 500 gold, that would be a great start to the rest of the game. So I think, uh, unfortunately, I don't know. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I did save. So I'm going to try this because I usually say that's no excuse for murder. So I'll talk to him about this. Oh, cool. Okay. The whole office is corrupt, I tell you. One of these days, they'll get exposed, I swear it. Here, though, this was his ring. Looks like his woman gave it to him. She should probably have it. She wasn't to blame in all this. All right. Uh, so maybe I can lie. Because 500 gold is nice, but a person's life is worth certainly more than 500 gold. I think even usually the bounty when you murder someone in cold blood in this game is like 2,000 gold or something. So I don't know why he's only off... Well, it's not like he knows that I'm going to have to murder him. But let's see if we can lie to him now and get that 500 gold. Like, say he, like, took off for the mainland or something. What? You shouldn't be here. Okay, you... Anyway. <laughs> okay, so that 500 gold would have been nice, but you know what? I think we did the right thing morally this time. Normally, I don't even do that so let's let's get the ring back to um ah geez i forgot her name already theron for mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, yeah nope don't remember it lighthouse lady um go ahead out all right all right so yeah here's his ring so, she gave us some Restore Health Potions. That's pretty cool. We'll use those. We don't need the 500 gold, y'all. I got We'll just... We'll make it work without it. We don't need it at all. What we're gonna do instead is... We are going to look for some... Maybe I will... No, no, no. Don't take the ring. Alright, against my better judgment... We are going to be okay with this. I'm going to sell the book that we stole from Therane, whoever, Lighthouse Lady, and this lantern. Get rid of the book. Get rid of the tankard. Um, I don't know, just, I'll keep the tax record for later. The grief. The axe. We definitely don't need the axe. We don't need the cursed ring. And we are going to keep all of the other alchemy equipment. So, yeah. Basically, that's that. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put the gold up to 300. Nice, round, even number. And then offer it. Come on. There we go. All right. So, if he doesn't immediately... If, if a shopkeeper in general doesn't immediately accept your offer, it's okay to just, like, click furiously until... 
they do accept your offer. That is totally fine. It will bring the disposition down a little bit. Like, see how it was 97 before, and now it's 94. But I'm pretty sure if you leave and re-talk to them, it'll it'll go back up. So, no worries about that. And, yeah, so basically I think that is pretty much it as for what you can just get done in Sedanin in the beginning. Um, I will recheck my notes and sources, but I do believe that this is what we got. I think this is all we got. So, let's take a look. That's not bad. I mean, so we started off the day with, what, like 80 gold or something. And even though a lot of gold, like, switched hands, and we didn't get that 500 gold that I thought we would be able to get because I don't want to kill that guy, um, we are ending it with 910. So 910 is more than enough to take the Silt Strider to Caldera, get that alchemy equipment, and then you know, speed up a bunch of footage while I sit around and uh, mix potion ingredients so that I can have enough to just swing through the rest of the game as easily as possible. So, yeah. Uh, basically, that's it for the Sedanin section. And next time, we will be going to Caldera to get the alchemy equipment. I don't think there's anything else that I can do here right now. Not without unlocking a bunch of doors. And I'm really not that sneaky yet. You know, I've only got sneak 10, security 10, and no on Ducey's open door yet. So I'm not going to be a very successful sneak until I can increase some of those other skills. But yeah, anyway, uh, I hope you found this relatively helpful. I mean, sometimes when it comes to open world RPGs like this, it can be a little difficult to know, like, the kinds of things that you could or should be doing. But I think these are the things that I normally start off every long game of Morrowind with. So yeah, thanks again for watching, and I hope you will come join me for episode 3, where we get ourselves real set up, ready to go, and then we go to meet Caius. Alright, thank you so much. See you soon.